Welcome back, my name is Benji, and today I want to welcome you to Pro Cycling Manager 2021 once again for a Holo Cometa career mode. Yes, indeed. Today we're going to be diving into the likes of Catalonia, RVV, and I think Duarte Vlaanderen as well. But first of all, Oldani's injured for so long. I thought he was just under the weather last episode. He's injured for like months. Glandular fever until mid-July. This means he will miss the Giro. Oh my god. And the tour. No, 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 no. I guess we need to change our planning then, because he can't go to both the Grand Tours he will settle into, so I guess he's going to the Vuelta instead then? What actually sucks the most is that he can't even defend his Italian jersey. Now, when it comes to the Giro, I did replace him with Magnus Sheffield, because we can sprint with Corvi, and I could use a rider that is good on the flat as well, and can help out for the team in total. First of all, Catalonia time. We've got hill stages all around, opportunities for Aramburu and uh, other Aramburu, because we're both sending them to this race. Three hill stages to start off with, a mountain stage on day four to La Molina. We've got another hill stage on day five, a flat stage on day six. But let's be real, if I push on this hill, I can make this a hilly rider sprint as well. Then on day seven, a hilly parkour. So... Aramburu is highly represented in potential results here, and I hope we can win at least, like, two stages. That would be nice, but I'm secretly hoping for more. I do think our competition's pretty big. Actually, Primoz Roglic is here, so that's pretty big. Higita is well looking very strong these days. 80 Mountains, 79 Hill. GC-wise, we're probably also going to go for Aramburu, unless Padun actually wins the mountain stage by a lot. I guess we'll figure it out throughout the race. We've got some sneaky attacks, Bargill going, Polans and Rebo as well, but we are looking good. I think we can catch them relatively well. Aramburu is setting the tempo at 92 right now. I can up it a bit more even in a second, but let's get some energy shells going in a tiny bit. We've got Maznad and Formula doing the exact same thing. Let's up it to 95 on Aramburu. Sprint can start on Fisher Black right now. Garcia looking great as well. And I think we might be looking very ideal for the stage win here. For now, Dion Smith on the right. Let's not launch too late with Aramburu, but I think it might be a one. Yes, indeed. Alex Aramburu wins already on the first stage of Catalonia. Head of Roglic and Jasper Philipson, man. Here he is, Roglic already gaining seconds in GC through the second spot. Crazy stuff. Stage two then, fits us as well. Uphill finish, false flat sprint though, so... A bigger chance that Jasper Philipson is feeling better on this one, most likely. But then again, if we push hard on that tiny hill in the last, I don't know, 10 kilometers, we might be able to uh, put some pressure on him. But he's not that terrible, you know, Philipson, when it comes to uphill sprints. 20k to go, and the team is ready to rumble. We've got ourselves at the front of the peloton and are setting ourselves up to launch Aramburu to hopefully a second victory. Let's turn Padun and Aramburu around. And let's have Garcia try and bring this three-man team to the line in a perfect condition. Potten will do the lead out indeed. He's got acceleration, so it won't be too terrible. Let's go 95 for now. And let's get ready to uh, launch with Potten as well in the next couple of corners. Right there, perhaps. That is still Chicone. Oh, I'm going to have to launch early with Aramburu or not. We're going to launch right now. Parepan traverses Aramburu. We've got some people following. Philipson comes around. No. Ah, oh, it's going to be. Philipson takes it. Oh, that is so sad. On the line, he passes us. And we get second in the race. So close. What a bummer. Anyway, GC-wise, we lose a leader jersey. I didn't anticipate that. Philipson takes it away from us. We're now on two seconds. But Roglic did not gain any time. We gained some seconds on Roglic himself. When it comes to Podden, we are on the same time as Parepandre, so that's six seconds behind Roglic now. Swamp Paper, still looking pretty fine. Giro on that end, another hill stage with another descent to the line. I feel like every single one of these Catalonia stages, except for the mountain stage, is the same. Nonetheless, I'm not going to complain because I do have a rider that fits on these races, but hopefully now we won't lose from Philipson. We are again third favorite with Philipson, not even mentioned there, but... He also wasn't mentioned last stage, and he won it. 18.5k to go, Aditz is pacing, and we've got the entire train ready again. I'm going to try and uh, 
keep the stamp up. The La Cruz is pacing quite hard. Ayuso's here, 78 Mountain these days. Good to keep track of that man. Philipson still surviving, but let's hope he won't for the entire climb. Here we go, we're topping the climb. Where is Philipson? He's still here. The man is still here. How is he still there? Three and a half K to go. We gotta keep on going. Philipson's still not in my wheel. He's a bit behind us, which is good. I'm gonna try and keep hammering it like crazy at the front in hopes that he can't get to the front on time to help us out. I'm basically sprinting with everybody. Adam Buru is getting blocked in and I launched too late, I think. Philipson on the right, Adam Buru on the left. Will we try and come around? Can we come around? It's once again, bloody Philipson. Ah, we even lose the place for second because I launched too late. Damn it. Another podium, but we were hunting for more and Philipson keeps surprising. He's got 68 hills, so that he survived that is fucking crazy. When it comes to GC, he of course extends his lead. Eight seconds down on Ramburu now. We've gotten 14 seconds on Roglic now though, but we also have a pot and around that will likely matter on the next stage. Because yeah, we've got the mountain stage to Molina and that is a one big HC climb before we get to Molina, mate. Nonetheless, let's try and do well with Pudden. And let's try and see if we can uh, get over this climb and get as close as possible with Aramburu because he's doing really well GC-wise and hopefully we can keep that going. But we've got Landa, Kuss, Lopez, Roglic, Almeida and so forth. He So this won't be easy. It's been a fast-paced race so far. We're on the largest climb today, the Alto Cueta, and that is the HG climb. Looks like Fisher Black is done, so let's switch towards Repair to do the work for Button. And let's try and get to the top of this climb without losing too much ground nor energy, because uh, I want to wait for the last climb to do my action. We are topping the climb, and we are basically isolated. Ropero is dropping from the group, and Amburu is trying to get back, so... Hopefully he can do so and be of help for Potten, but for now, it is not looking too amazing. We've got to move up front. Leonard Kemna is going for something. Uran and Alba pacing right now, but yeah, I guess that was the climb. Let's see if we can get back with some people so that we can at least have some help for Potten here. We found our way back with Aramburu and he's protecting Potten now. Ropero has more trouble and can't seem to close the gap, so uh, that's quite troublesome. Here we go, the La Molina climb is about to begin and we've got two riders left that are doing a, a wonderful job so far. Let's hope Aramburu can keep up this stellar ride and stay with Pudden as long as possible on the climb. We unfortunately lost contact because we got blocked by Pai Panther, but looks like we're getting back as attacks are happening at the front most likely, because that's the only reason that a peloton would stop pacing like that. Yes, attacks did happen and we are blocked in. This is a great race, absolutely stunning. Oh, goodness sake, come on. We've got Dumoulin now pacing, Walter pacing. Suddenly 40 seconds in between here. We've got plenty of energy, by the way. Let's try and use it on the right side of the road. But a Pantra has been riding in the way this entire climb. No jokes. 90, let's try and get back as far as possible, but this is in no way happening. We've got Roglic winning this with utter ease and Potten doesn't even come remotely close to it because, well, it's quite simple. But a Pantra. We're actually going to be finishing in the group just behind Roglic, which is kind of a surprise looking at how terrible the climb went for us. And we've got yellow left, so we could have gone a bit harder a bit earlier on the climb. But finishing in the top 10 after that massacre is pretty decent, I guess. Of course, I was hoping for a much better result, but GC-wise, we're now on 13th on the same time as the 4th spot. But a pantry, literally the man that decided halfway to climb that he wanted to stop cycling and walked up the climb just in front of us. And as a consequence, we dropped from the group. But hey, I guess we won't be salty against bloody Pare Pantre. Stage 5 then, the stage that fits Aramburu again. So I guess we can try and get our second stage win in this Volta Ciclista Catalunya. We're trying to push extremely hard on this climb here because there's a man in the peloton called Jasper Philipson that I do want to try and drop before we get to the sprint. And we've seen a few times already that that is not as easy as it sounds. Spotting in 99 into the descent. Fisher Black can get into the wheel for a bit. There we go. And we need to hammer it down the descent as fast as possible now. Still got Garcia for the lead out. So that's perfect. Ooh, he's closing in towards the front again. We need to hammer it hard. We need to hammer it hard. Come on, Potten, it's your turn. Fisher Black is done for. Let's make sure this man cannot get to the front of the peloton right now. Energy on everybody. It's 2k to go. I need to sprint with everybody right now and hope that Amburu can 
come out at the right time right now. On the right, we've got Bargill. Where's Philipson? Nowhere near. It's gonna be a victory for Aramburu because we beautifully put Philipson out of the uh, sprint race here. Perfect ride. That feels good. Yes, indeed. Alex, thank you very much. Let's take a look at the general classification. We are nowhere to be seen. Actually, we're ninth now with Padun, so I guess that's a W. When it comes to the points classification, we are on four points of Higita, so let's try and uh, let's try and beat him. A flatter sprint this one. Philipson is the favorite for this one. It's gonna be really tough to drop him beforehand because I feel like going all out on that first cat might be very early to do so. So I might just focus on the sprint at the end and hope that we've got it and hope that we were better than Philipson on the line. Oh, I didn't actually know that, but Philipson has Bosen Hagen as lead out. It's actually a pretty good combo in this. I'm slightly blocked in on the right side of the road, so let's hope we can get past people in this corner. Yes, perfect. Let's see if Ropero can take over right now from Aramburu. Aritz is done for today, and we've gotten ourselves past the break. Ooh, lo, lo, lo. Aramburu, get to the wheel, my friend, because you are quite vital to the plan of sprinting with Aramburu. 99 for Ropero right now, and his shell's a bit late, but I guess we'll still survive. And I'll try and sprint with Fisher Black. Aramburu in the wheel, Aramburu in the wheel. Garcia can launch, Aramburu can launch as well, Baden can launch as well. Where's Philipson? Where's Philipson? It's gonna be Caden Groves winning. Okay, we launched way too late with Aramburu, by the way, but where the hell is Philipson? Honestly, not sure what happened there. Bosen Hagen lead out of Philipson gets second. We get fourth on this, Fisher Black gets fifth, and Garcia gets sixth. So, a uh, bit of an odd and bad result, actually, for our team. In an ideal world, I find a way to gain, like, five seconds with Baden, and I'm in the top three of this race. So, if I can do so, I will. Stage 7 in Barcelona, the known circuit. Obviously, Aramburu is the man for this kind of finish, but we also want those five seconds on Baden. So, what I'll do is, I'll try and hunt for the intermediate sprints and try and get six seconds like that. And as a consequence, come up into the top three of GC that way. If that does not work, then I've got a bit of an issue and I might have to try for an attack with Baden in the last circuit. Every single one of these intermediate sprint gives us a total of three seconds. So indeed, we need to get at least one time first and one time second off first. So this will not be easy. We've got Baden sitting relatively at the front. So that's a win in that regard. Let's see if we can get Fisher Black ahead of everybody together with him in the wheel let's do button in the wheel there we go and then let's try and get everybody else really to the front as well because they're going to need to try and help out if you want to make this happen but for now let's try and control the group as we start this stage to prevent other people from attacking straight away here we go a move by fisher black on the right we've gotten ourselves with an attack of three riders up there that is perfect let's 90 now we've got a bit of a gap half state is facing us down but for now, this is looking good because now I can sprint with Podden and I should be able to get the sprint quite easily against the rest because the rest is basically our riders. Perfect. Now Podden can wait and we only need like two more seconds. We are now technically on fourth in GC. I'm afraid our second mission failed, which was trying to keep the break in check for that second intermediate. Didn't work in time and so we were not able to sprint forward with Podden. Nonetheless, we'll try again on the last hill and see if we can get a bit of a gap with Button because we are now sitting in fourth in GC, but I'd love to be in the top three. I quite honestly fear that I won't be able to get Button to the front fast enough to actually make a move with him on this climb. Let's start our sprint right now, just out of this corner. We've got Higita on the right, Aramburu on the left. Aramburu should be faster on paper, but Higita's holding on. Higita's actually holding on, and Higita wins? Damn it! Oh, fuck! Ah, oh, damn it. That's a bummer. Let's hope we don't lose the points, Jazzy, with that. Actually, Formulo probably was found on the stage, Orlando, because they took my bloody fourth place. So I only went up one spot with all that trouble of the intermediate sprint. Points-wise, we do keep the Jersey and the classification, so that's a win on Alex Aramburu's spot. Overall, a very successful race for us, to be honest. We've gotten two stage wins and a top five in GC. Could we have done better in GC if I didn't blow that beautiful uh, mountain stage? Well, uh, perhaps, but hey, that didn't happen, so there are no what-ifs in cycling. After our adventure in Catalonia, we go towards Belgium, Flanders for the uh, Cobble Classics. Twardsdorf Vlaanderen, first of all, but it seems to be an old parkour, because I swear the current parkour is much harder than this one. Nonetheless, I don't really mind if it's easier on paper 
then I can have a chance in a reduced bunch sprint with the likes of an Aramburu or whoever's in my team. Kovi and Aramburu, so that's gonna be a pretty fun race. We just finished off the rougher part of this race, which was the combo of the following climb, Steinberg, Dries, Steinberg, and also Berchtenhauter. The rest of the parkour is not as difficult, so I should on paper be able to get over it without too much trouble. I've got Sheffield for the flat, Aru still here even, so that says a lot about the uh, quality of cobbles we've had so far. The hardest section was the Maria Borestrad, but that was not too intense. For the rest of the race, my focus will be on just keeping my riders at the front of the group and making sure I can get as far as possible in the race with them. Oh my god, we've got an attack by Macho Van der Poel right here, just before the Varenstraat. R was the one trying to control Van der Poel on a couple reins. This makes no sense, but I'm doing it anyway. Let's try and see if we can close down the gaps here, because 27 kilometers is still a long way, but I don't like Van der Poel getting away, you know? For obvious reasons. Ooh, I think we uh, survived a possible crash there. Tij Benoit is the rider that went down. A group is getting away, so let's prevent ourselves from being in a situation where we're the only one that needs to chase in a group. And it seems like this group is now uh, back together with Van der Poel as a solo leader with 22 seconds, so barely anything. And we've got another move, and those include sprinters. Demar and Decker now trying to do something here. Not exactly sure what the plan is. They're spending a lot of effort for being sprinters here, but I'm kind of surprised they're still in the group, knowing that there's only 22 people in this entire form of riders here. But hey, Aramburu is doing all the work for Kovi right now, trying to clean up all the gaps. And if we can keep doing that, then we are in a decent position to at least sprint for a top five. And we've got another move, Tom Pitcock going. He's got Laporte for a potential sprint here. Let's make sure we're not caught behind right here because we're blocking Aramburu with Kovi. That was a mistake. That was a big mistake. Let's see if we can get back to the front of the group now. Six kilometers to go. And hopefully right on time to start the sprint. Jesus, this is a narrow section. I don't like this, but we are passing through. I think I've got the energy to pull this off. At least a lead out and a sprint. I don't know where I will finish though, but hey, I don't really care as long as we try. 90 energy spendage, not really a descent. Let's keep going. 99. Aramburi ready to start a sprint. Alex starts a sprint. Kovi in second wheel. We've got this corner coming up. Any corners after that? Let's go right now with Kovi. Kovi tries to come around on the right. Seneschal here as well. Five hundred minutes to go. Aramburu might keep it. Aramburu might keep it. Aramburu wins Dwarzor of London ahead of Kovi. And all because of the corners in the last kilometer. Because otherwise I would have been beaten by the sprinters, obviously. But hey, I will not complain in this situation. Last episode, Kovi was the king. But this episode, it is clearly Aramburu. What a legend right now. Absolute beast. When it comes to the cobbles, Dwarzdorf London was kind of peanuts, so let's take a look at the real gem here, RVV, the fourth Grand Tour. Let's take a look if we can do well with Aramburu and Alessandro Kovi. On a side note, Wout van Aert is not at the race, he has a fractured skull and is unavailable till like June in this career mode, so that's a bit of a bummer for his end, but I guess it's a benefit for us, so I won't complain. Oh my god, we've got a plus for an Aramburu, which is 77 cobble and Kovi with 80 cobble. That's insane, we can actually try and compete for the victory here. 90 kilometers to go, and we've got 68 people in the peloton. We've got three riders in there from our team, the rest is done for or gone in the race. Lars Boven has energy, but he's like, Foreman is behind, so that's not really useful. When it comes to our riders in the peloton, Sheffield, Aramburu and Kovi in a three-man train. I'm gonna keep it that way, because that's an ideal way to keep Aramburu and Kovi towards the front of the group, and I feel like my positioning is more important here than my energy spendage. Next out of Quartermont then, we go towards the ride, a four-man group still ahead, and it's about to go down. Sheffield, Aramburu and Kovi are ready for the cobble sections, and I'm moving up the tempo ASAP through the bloody motorbikes on the outer Quartermont. This should not be happening. We're now stuck behind the car, we have to move on the right of a car right now. This is so not okay. Scully seems to have a better side because he's going faster, despite us being better at cobbles. Come on, man. This bloody car was in the way, I blame it. 26 people in the group, and it seems like there's a bunch of people gone, which is obvious when there's 26 people left in the group. Where's Vanderpool and such? Because I feel like I have not seen Tumo down here, and Van Mark as well. So quite a few big guns are behind right now. Vanderpool kind of surprising, but they are back now. 
considering the tempo on the Paterberg is abysmally low. We do have to watch out because after the Paterberg I dove into the descent but I lost track of the breakaway which is now Ballerini, Asgren, Pitcock and Turgi, so quite a strong group. Dylan Turns trying to close it down, seems like we'll have to move over to Aramburu quite soon which is not entirely likable because I would have liked keeping him a bit longer in this race but hey if it's necessary I'll uh I'll have to start using him. Copenberg now, Sheffield is basically done for, so it's Aramburu time. Oh, no, 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 come on! Really? Oh, fuck's sake. I've got one rider left now. Aramburu, get to the front, get to the front. Hopefully this group does not split up here. We've got eight people. Oh, my God, they're gone. Vanderpool's gone. How did that just happen? My entire race just collapsed. Thanks to Aramburu's puncture. Damn it. I'm going to try and benefit from the work of Paulit and such to hope that they catch up with the break, which is now still Vanderpool and Turgi, Benoit, Nasn and Asgren in the chasing group. But that's two minutes to Vanderpool. How the hell are we supposed to close that? This might completely backfire the fact that I'm basically forcing the others to do the work for me. But if I do the work myself, there's no way in hell I'm going to get a good result out of this. So I'm going to try and benefit off of them instead of helping out myself. Back to the outer Quartermont then, the last proper climb of this race. Can I move up on the right side of the road right here? Gotta keep in mind, after this climb, we've got the other climb still, which is the Paterberg, which is not an easy one. Let's see if we can set up a decent tempo, but not too extreme, and then Pitcock decides that my tempo sucks and decides to attack away. Damn it, Pitcock. Kofi's about to get dropped here. I can feel it. I have to up it to 90 if I want to do something. Look at it. They're just riding away. How is this possible? This tempo difference. I think our race is basically over to be honest. Let's try a last minute 85 attempt on the Paterberg right here or perhaps 90 to try and catch up with some of the riders up there. Let's do 95. Come on, come on, come on, come on. And we've caught up with a few so a top 10 is still possible which is exactly what I was hoping for. Oh my god, this is the front of the race. Ah, oh, they're attacking again. So close yet so far. We're not getting back to those guys, that's for certain. I don't have the energy to do anything anyway if I catch them. Or perhaps if I get to their wheel now, this might work out. Oh, let's save energy. We are in the front of the race with 5k to go. Oh my god, this changed completely. Can I get onto the wheel of somebody like Vanderpool? Do we have the energy to follow that? I might follow the uh, lower riders here and not the front of the race myself. Because if I follow Vanderpool, I'm fucked anyway. Energy shell. Let's try and follow the back of the group. Let's see if we can go ourselves a bit on 85 for a bit. There we go. Let's follow, let's follow Moscon for now. Hopefully he closes it for us. Come on, Moscon, close it, close it, close it. 3k to go. Good, good, good. Move to the front, move to the front. 2.5k to go. Let's lower it towards 65 for us. And let's up it quite soon for us to 85 right now. I'm going to launch my sprint. Corvi goes. Van der Poel at the front. Kovi's gonna be too late. Kovi's gonna be too late. Ah, damn it! Seneschal or Van der Poel? It's Van der Poel winning Ronde van Vlaanderen. We're gonna be finishing ninth. Ninth obviously isn't a bad result for this race, but I was hoping for a tiny bit more considering the state we were in when it comes to our stats. But yeah, it didn't really work out, did it? On the Copenberg, everything fell apart in one second. The puncture of Aramburu. There we go, our first Ronde van Vlaanderen. I really enjoyed that, and I hope we can actually do better in the next years, because I do believe that Kovi can actually win that race in the future. When it comes to the next episode, though, we're going to be taking on Itzulia Basque Country, Amstel Gold, Brabant's Appeal, and uh, perhaps something else, but I don't know yet. So for now, let's keep it at that. Thank you very much for watching this episode. If you liked it, tap that like button. If you didn't tell me what's wrong, I'll try and make it better for you next time. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon. Goodbye.